Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Social media is the most important way many Americans talk to each other about politics. So what happens when certain political views are censored by online giants like Facebook and Twitter? Conservatives have argued for years that their ideas are often shut down by these media kingpins. Now, after his own battle with Twitter, President Trump is fighting back. Jennifer Wishon has the story. Prager University is a conservative media mega house. Its videos have been viewed 3.4 billion times and counting. Nearly 4 million people follow them on Facebook. But a recent Facebook notification handicapped the organization. An independent fact checker had flagged this one minute video. It exposes this widely viewed video of an emaciated polar bear as a deception promoted by climate change activists. Facebook calls it fake news and to punish Prager, it's limiting distribution of its posts. What Facebook is doing, they're, they're, they're trying to keep their hands clean and they're using these third party fact checkers uh, to, our, to be the truth, uh, the truth tellers and, and to determine what is true and what is not. So unfortunately, it's very easy to weaponize this and to target uh, organizations like, like us at PragerU. This comes just days after Facebook appointed the first 20 members of its new oversight board. Only five are American, and that's raising red flags since the board has signaled an intention to adopt global, not American norms on free speech. If you're going to pass judgment on American free speech, then have Americans do it. It's still going to be problematic. It's still going to be a huge problem because it's going to be dominated by leftists. But at least in theory, they're grounded by the Constitution, not something that came out of Slovakia. President Trump is sounding the alarm. He signed an executive order that removes the liability shield social media companies currently enjoy because they're considered neutral platforms. Trump says they're anything but. What they choose to fact check and what they choose to ignore or even promote is nothing more than a political activism group or political activism. And it's inappropriate. Overnight, Twitter posted a notice the president violated its rules on glorifying violence, flagging this tweet about continuing violent protest in Minneapolis. This after the platform added a fact check warning to two of his tweets about mail-in voting. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg recently took a different tone than Twitter or even his own newly appointed oversight board, saying, I don't think that Facebook or Internet platforms in general should be arbiters of truth. The easy solution would be for the president, PragerU, and other conservative groups to get off the platforms that are censoring them. But that would take them out of the marketplace of ideas, where they can potentially reach billions. We know that if people hear conservative ideas, conservative values, uh, that they will be, one, open to them, and two, convinced, and we could change their mind. The reality is when you combine social media giants and Google, they are the Internet. It's hard to use it without them. That's why PragerU and other groups plan to keep fighting to be heard, viewed, and shared. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Well, this is going to be an ongoing debate, and it's curious to me that the European Union is actually ahead of us in trying to find proper regulation for uh, these Internet giants. Uh, we haven't done anything other than try to give them protection from liability law. What the president is currently doing, I don't think it's going to work. He doesn't have the authority to have the FCC come in. Uh, that has to be done by statute, and trying to get a bill through the current Congress is, uh, forget it, it's just not going to happen right now. Uh, and it might even backfire if you say we're going to take away their liability um, protection from slander suits. Well, that doesn't do anything for free speech. If anything, it, it increases the policing of speech on these sites because they're going to be afraid of lawsuits. So it's it's one of those, until Congress acts, we're not going to see uh, any kind of uh, regulation over Twitter, over Facebook, over Google. And we have to recognize they're private com companies. And as private companies, our constitutional protections don't apply. Constitutional protections only protect you from your government, not from a private company.
In other news, a third night of violent protests in Minneapolis over the senseless death of George Floyd. George Thomas has that story from the CBN newsroom. George? That's right, Gordon. Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz had sent in the National Guard before last night's violent protests following the death of George Floyd. Demonstrators destroyed businesses, looted and stole from stores, and set police station on fire. Many stores, as you can imagine, are closing in wake of the violence. Floyd's girlfriend told the Star Tribune that the riots would, quote, devastate him and that she wanted people to protest peacefully. The protests have also spread to other cities across our country. Turning now to the Middle East, President Trump has been very supportive of Israel, including moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Now his administration is taking a more controversial step, working with Israel to annex Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria. Chris Mitchell has that story from Jerusalem. Prime Minister Netanyahu recently presented his reasons for wanting to put annexation to a vote in Israel's parliament in July. Three months ago, the Trump peace plan recognized Israel's rights in all of Judea and Samaria. And President Trump pledged to recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Jewish communities there and in the Jordan Valley. A couple of months from now, I'm confident that that pledge will be honored, that we will be able to celebrate another historic moment in the history of Zionism. Netanyahu and other Israelis see this area as the biblical heartland of Israel, first settled by patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It also serves as the ancestral homeland of the Jewish people, who returned here after nearly 2,000 years. Yet many international governments and organizations opposing annexation label it the West Bank, part of a future Palestinian state. As you know, this runs counter to international law, violates existing agreements, and is not in line with international security Council resolutions and council conclusions of the European Union. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas plans to scrap all deals with Israel and the U.S., including security agreements, to protest annexation. Neighboring Jordan also issued a veiled threat. The words of His Majesty King Abdullah were very clear. We will not accept annexation of Palestinian lands, and based on that, we will reconsider our relationship with Israel in all its dimensions. But Middle East analyst Caroline Glick argues annexation would improve Israel's standing. It's obvious that Israel's strategic position uh, in the region, in Judea and Samaria, and also uh, throughout the Middle East is going to be vastly improved after we do this. And if we don't do this, not only do we harm our relations with the Trump administration, but we undermine our credibility as a strategic actor in the region. The Trump administration is now drawing up a map with Netanyahu to determine what annexation will look like here on the ground. The July timing is important because the Trump administration and Netanyahu want to make sure this happens long before November's presidential election. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Gush Etzion. Chris, thank you so much. Gordon, I'm curious, do you think this is a good idea by Prime Minister Netanyahu to put this annexation question to a vote in July? Well, he's trying to take advantage of the timing. While he has a favorable administration in the United States, he knows he can have protection at the Security Council, at the U.N., uh, and so he wants to act while he can. Uh, the election in November in the United States is uncertain at best, and so uh, what will the new administration, if there is a new administration, what would they do and how will they treat Israel and how would they look at the annexation? But what it's doing, and it, we, we have to understand what it's doing, it's recognizing the reality on the, on the ground. These aren't settlements, they're cities. And they're cities with Israelis, uh, not Palestinians, with Israelis. And so what he's saying is uh, we are going to incorporate these cities into our map and say uh, we now officially recognize you as part of Israel. The other thing it does is it absolutely kills a two-state solution, but uh, again, that's recognizing the reality on the ground. Uh, we, you, you have to keep in mind the 73-year history now, uh, that, you know, 72-year history of, of the, the Palestinians n never missing an opportunity to miss an opportunity. They've had an opportunity to form a separate state from Israel 
and have huge tracts of land under their control. They've had that opportunity again and again and again and again and again. They have never done it. They have never tried to form a Palestinian state, define those borders, and say, we're going to uh, take over this area and we're going to live at peace with Israel. Uh, they've had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. They've turned them all down. And their continual drive has been jihad, jihad, jihad. Their continual drive is let's drive Israel into the sea. You know, let's take Tel Aviv. Um, those have been their, their battle cries. And they reward terrorists. They are still paying people to kill Israelis. Uh, they reward them as martyrs in the cause. And so uh, trying to say there's going to be peace here, no, there's not going to be peace. So what, what Netanyahu is doing is said, let's recognize it. Let's seize the moment when we have a favorable administration in the United States. We can get protection at the Security Council. Uh, let's go ahead and recognize the reality on the ground. These are Jewish cities, and they need to be part of Israel. Uh, and not part of any future Palestinian states. So let's go ahead and annex the territory. Now, what's going to happen in the aftermath right after this happens? Expect the EU to condemn it. Expect every single Arab state surrounding Israel to condemn it. Whether it triggers another war is going to be an open question. Uh, but this is something that, you know, is there going to be peace right now? No, no. This is going to start yet another intifada and may even start a war.